Good afternoon, brethren, brothers and sisters from Central, the eldership, and all our new elders there at Central, the mission committee. A very pleasant day to you. Greetings from Port Kaituma, from the Atuaros. It's a, it's a little bit sunny today. We are in the midst of our rain season, but today been a little bit sunny. Um, I wanted to get Brother Green and um, Brother Sip to do the video with me, but I am unable to get them to be here. So I will do a short video and let you know what is going on. But I send my greetings to, to all of you. God bless you very much. <clears throat> um, so, first of all, I know um, you've been hearing a lot about my health. Well, I am doing a lot better. I went to Georgetown and um, I did some other tests that Dr. Joan Palmer wanted me to do. Those came back um, okay, but I have my, it's a stomach problem. It's a um, issue with refluxes, um, acid refluxes, so I'm on treatment for that. I am doing a lot better um, since I came back. I spent a week. Um, everyone home here are doing fine. Cheryl is doing okay. Kemi is doing okay. She is at home. Um, our school system is still closed down. They are just doing some special classes um, for the exam children who is due to write exam. We should have written exam. Um, more than a month ago and some will be writing um, during the July um, season so um, that is happening but Kemi is not going Kelly is going two times a week and she is doing special classes at school but so far our family we're doing fine Kelvin, Kelly and Joylin they're doing fine Kelvin is working from home and um like I said, Ernesto, Kelly, and Emerald, they're okay. And it was, it, was, it was really good for me to go and spend a week with them. Um, I probably would have spent a little bit more out there, but our airstrip closed down for three weeks. In fact, Cheryl got the news the Monday evening, and when she called me, I begged to get on the last flight on Tuesday morning, and that is um, how I came back last week. So I am back home and um, that is as far as our family is. Um, for church, we have not been able to meet at no meeting. Um, the lockdown and curfew is still in place. They have extended it until July. Um, and they were thinking about lifting all of that sometime 21st of June but they have extended that um, curfew and lockdown period in fact the COVID-19 is getting worse in Guyana um, every day the numbers are going up and um, right now our testing lab which we have in Georgetown um, they said it's broken down, so we don't know what is going to happen <clears throat> in terms of um, for the testing or how quickly that will work. But there is a, a, a high rate of um, infection. Um, fortunately, we haven't heard of any in Port Kaituma, but no testing are being done here. So we don't really know for sure what is happening here. But our region is now becoming the uh, most infected region. Moruka area, that is where Asakata is, where we used to go in. That sub-region of our region, there are several cases. In fact, um, one day alone, they had like, like 21 cases two days ago. And there is another couple of cases again. There are several teachers... The entire, uh, the doctor and four nurses, a bunch of students um, and, and other business people in the area. 
Mabruma, which had the first case um, of uh, during the month of March, late March, they have had the second case yesterday. And boats are coming and going, but they block the river um, below Turu Mission Church to avoid boats coming in and testing people there and checking them out. So that is, we're really scared, to be honest, but we're trusting God. Um, we're not meeting a church. In fact, no church is um, no churches are meeting in the area since the lockdown and the curfew. But there is um, word of locking down the entire this entire region. In fact, there are three region region one, region seven, and region nine. These are the regions that um, are bordered by Brazil and Venezuela. And so they're thinking seriously about totally locking down this region. I don't know what that will mean, um, how that will affect us. But so far, we're staying at home. We're staying safe. Um, we're advising people. The government is advising that we wear masks in the public. Um, we we distant um, six feet apart if we're in public, not more than one person going out. Um, I think the WHO um, protocols are what we, our government, want us to follow here for our own safety and others. Um, all, all I am doing is staying in touch with brethren um, by telephone. Um, if I go out on the road, I might see one or two of them. Um, that's how we would meet, but we would stay in touch with phone and everyone is saying that they're trying their best at home to um, you know, keep a little meeting at home, um, pray together, sing, and those who can take the Lord's Supper, they're doing it at home. We have a time set out where we're all doing it on, at, at the same time. We are also having brethren, we are reading through different books of the Bible, and we're doing it at 7 every night. And so we inform all the brethren that at 7 o'clock, this is where we're reading and we're reading so many chapters per day and praying so i think several brethren are engaged in that activity at home <clears throat> so that is the way we are staying in in touch with each other and and encouraging one another to to, to stay strong and um, the people are scared in fact the church members are taking it very serious but i must say on on on, on the other hand there are a lot of people in the community. They are all over the place without masks. They 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 so careless. Um, they're just going about like everything is normal, and and that is really scary. So that is as far as the situation is. Our electoral problem, just to give you an update, that is in a mess, and that is contributing to not being able to fight the COVID nineteen pandemic at the same time. Our electoral process is in a mess. Over three months have gone, no declaration of a winner. There are court cases. The government is not conceding, even though it seemed like they lost. Um, by the recount of the votes and even the election day activities. But the whole international world is uh, coming down on the government to concede. So we don't know where that will go. So please pray for us with the pandemic. Pray for us with the electoral business. Keep praying for my health. Um, I know you are, brethren, and I want to thank you very much for that. Um, I don't know how we are going to do church. I was hoping to have a meeting um, this week, um, earlier this week with the men, but um, Brother Harry is coming out um, sometime in another few days, so we're waiting until he gets out because he has been away for a while. And then we, you know, he's one of our leaders, so we'll meet again. We had one meeting a little over a month ago. And um, we will discuss how we're going to encourage brethren and, and make sure that they, you know, stay somehow active. But that is where we are as a church. We don't know how we're going to meet um, when we start to meet because Turu Mission building is usually crowded. Um, we're going to have to find a way. Um, Cheryl has done a really wonderful job. She, she sewed over 170 mask cloth mask and um we were able to share that out to, to the brethren on the river our neighborhood 
and um, some organization, the hospital, we've given a few. And so she had um, done that. So that, that is uh, a really a good thing that we were able to do. Others are trying to do, but some people are now wearing it. Um, I, I want to thank you so much for your support. I um, want to thank you so much, brethren, for your prayers um, and keeping us here. So far, we have food stuff in the area. There is no big shortage. Um, I must tell you that um, in March, we the we had about six hundred dollars U.S. dollars in, in contribution. We took that money and we bought some food um, just in case we needed it. Um, we bought that and we had it. But about a few weeks ago, um, the leadership we decided we would um, share that food out, and so Cheryl and Kemi and Joylin they were able to make about 57 hampers um, uh, we had like rice sugar salt flour so they made about 57 hampers and we give those hampers out to most of the needy family of the Turu Mission Church and um, people who've been visiting us at Turu Mission that are needy so we did not give all the families of the Turu Mission Church. Like, like we didn't um, do any, Kelvin didn't do any, um, our leaders didn't do any, and one, two other members requested that they're okay. So we give 57 hampers out to the most needy members of the church at Turu and um, other people on the river that uh, were, that are visitors. Um, and then Cheryl and myself and Kelvin, we made up about eight hampers for the Orinoc brethren, the um, Orinoc families, the eight families there. And we we give them out at the same time, eight hampers, um, some food stuff. So that's what um, has happened here of recent. And um, we're monitoring the situation. We're trying to see what will take place and um, how things will go. But that is how we're staying in touch with brethren. By phone, we're calling up checking how they're doing and um, talking and, and praying and so far no one is sick and so far everyone um, are doing okay um, at this point in time so I want to thank you again for um, everything that you're doing for us and you're keeping us in prayer I know that it is hard out there too um, the pandemic is it's really, really getting at people, so I will try to keep you posted. Um, best. Brother David Nance will talk to me pretty often, and, and that is so encouraging. Um, Ed Dito spoke to me recently, too, and um, we had a good talk. And so I want to say, um, you know, much love to you, much love to your family. Stay safe. Keep praying. Keep praying for us. Keep trusting God. We are doing the same here. Thank you very much, brethren. God bless you, and I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.